Good morning, everyone. It's time to go on the record. If you want to call yourself a smoking cessation product, then you can go down and, and sign yourself up with the FDA. Tough talk from A.G. Maury Healy on e-cigarettes and the public records law. The people's new watchdog showing her bite on Beacon Hill. The state's treasurer, Deb Goldberg, concerned about pension payouts and funding for new lottery games. She is our guest today. We'll talk about it. And looking ahead to 2016 and the possibility of a presidential election between a Clinton and a Bush. Anybody got a problem with that? From WCPB Boston, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with Janet Wu, our political reporter here at News Center 5. Our guest this morning is the new state treasurer, Deb Goldberg. The Brookline Democrat took office in January. She is a former member of the Brookline Board of Selectmen and a longtime community activist. And here's one interesting personal note. Her family once owned a stop and shop retail chain. And as a former worker at Star Market in the Delhi Department, uh -oh. we welcome you to OTR. Well, thank you very much. But from what I understand, uh, Janet's son may have worked at Stop and Shop. He did when he was very young. It was when his first paying job, as a matter of fact. All right, so I'm out number two to one. But <laughs> hey. I did the Delhi. What do you want? <laughs> Moving to Beacon Hill, you've expressed skepticism over Governor uh, Baker's early retirement plan. Um, you oversee the state pension fund. He proposed putting it in, in the cash to cover anyone who takes the offer. So what's your view on this? Is this a good idea? Well, I am not skeptical about the actual retirement bill. What I'm concerned about is um, we'd like to look at the details and see the impact. The uh, initial reaction internally was that on the very first day we got a thousand inquiries. So in terms of if they get the number that they want, which is about 4,500 right. people, the amount of clerical work that will be involved and will need to um, put people towards that work. So internally it's a challenge. Uh, long term, we need to see what the impact is on the unfunded pension liability. Uh, they do plan to pay it out over 15 years, but 15 years is a very long time. A lot of things can happen over 15 years. So the amount of money that they're offering to compensate you don't think will be enough? Is that what you're saying? No, it's not that it won't be enough. It's the time frame because other things can impact the way in which Moody's and the rating agencies look at us and we don't want it to negatively impact the bond rating which is so critical to our capital project. The, the governor, the senate president, the house speaker all want to um, hire a consultant to make sure the taxpayers don't get left holding the bag. Is that a good idea? Uh, left holding the bag on on the, on the Olympics. I'm sorry, we're shifting to the Olympics now. Oh, okay. Um, well, I agree ent uh, entirely that we need to be looking at the Olympics. The idea is exciting. I'm mm -hmm. sure for people like you who are also in the news, the concept of having an Olympics in our backyard could be very, very exciting. There's so many unknowns. In particular, we don't want the taxpayers being in any way imposed upon do we have the infrastructure to support it are we able as we look at our priorities moving forward and we so, have to find so, other things so, we be so hiring to do it? A, is, it, is it a smart idea to hire a consultant to make sure that taxpayers don't get it we absolutely have somebody with expertise who can do that i think that it's great that our former governor who's experienced it in salt lake city is willing to be Mitt helpful Romney, Mitt Romney yeah. and I think you do need someone to do a complete analysis of what it would be. Should there be, be a limit on how much that is spent? On the Olympics? On, on, the, on the consultant, on the consultant. Who, who might come in? I do think there should be a limit. I yeah. think that um, a, a consulting team should not just look at this as a cash cow mm -hmm. but as a full participant possibly someone locally who has a vested interest in seeing an exciting moment in the history of the city of Boston. Speaking of uh, governors, former Governor Deval Patrick is signed a pretty lucrative deal, $7,500 per day to lobby for Boston 2024. Do you think this was a good idea, that this was the right move? Well, I think the way in which possibly the mayor of Boston and the governor learned of it through reading it in the press themselves probably wasn't the best strategy. Should have you taken the job, though? You know, I can't really judge that. Um, I think that the former governor really does know how to market Massachusetts. He's done it a lot. Uh, and uh, it's an, it was a, it struck all of us the same way. Wow, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow. wow, yes, wow, wow, no. I know you love to have a yes or no, <laughs> Janet. <laughs> um, Is it wow, yes or wow, I, no? I'm going to be candid. My initial reaction was he certainly knows how to market our state. He's brought a lot of businesses in here, so if that's the goal, is to actually get the Olympics, then having Duvall work on that is probably a good thing. But what about voter um, sort of um, 
impression that's left here with all these former Deval Patrick administration people going over there? Well, you know, it really does um, reinforce some concern about a lot of things that the public always looks at, and that is, you know, you're, you work in gov at the government level, and then you're able to leverage that to do other things. And, um, but on the other hand, these are people in the know. They do understand some of the challenges we have. Um, Duval, better than anyone, has studied the infrastructure system. Uh, it's, was a, it was something he cared a great deal about. How do we improve it? And so he would know where we need to do these things. And I think that's why um, having Mitt Romney, who did an Olympics and knows Massachusetts, is a good thing. They have a lot of information. So I, I understand why the public looks at that and goes, oh my goodness. But on the other hand, there is a knowledge base. Are there. you ready for the OTR pop quiz? No one is ever oh, ready on, for the on. OTR pop quiz. See, the music says we have to do it. So I've just okay. heard the music. Okay. I'll do my very best. With the GOP presidential candidates now showing up every weekend, we thought we would test your knowledge in the potential 2016 field because we're closing in on it. In New Hampshire, question one Jeb Bush is a former governor of Florida and is thought to be the front runner in the GOP race. <laughs> At one time, he lived in Massachusetts. Where? Oh, my goodness. Um, I would say Cambridge, but I'm, Betty went to prep school here instead. So All right. It's got to be a prep school. There you go. So we could do Andover. Or stop right there. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I need a hot. Alphabetical. That's alphabetical. <laughs> you start with the A's. <laughs> Phillips Andover, like his, his father and his brother, he graduated that from the great. prestigious prep yes. school. That, that was, a, there was a brilliant <laughs> breakdown of what's going on. Question two, it's the numbers game. George Herbert Walker Bush is the 41st president of the United States. George W. is the 43rd. Right. What number president would a Jeb Bush be if a Jeb Bush was elected? 45. Absolutely. Barack <laughs> Obama is number 44. Okay, we can stop there. No, we've got three more. <laughs> we continue with the state treasurer, Deb Goldberg. Too.